If you are new here, this is the most beginner friendly complete web development course and these are some of the projects we will be covering in this course. I upload lots of lessons per week so please subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss any of them. I respond promptly to comments so if you want to ask or say something feel free to drop it in the comments. If you missed any of the previous lessons, the link to the entire playlist is down in the description box. Let's get started. In this project, we are going to be creating this beautifully simple calculator over here. And as you can see, it has the basic functionalities of any calculator, division, multiplication, subtraction, addition. All right. So let's see it in action. So you can do something like 78 times 65. Then you press the equal to, and then you have your results over here. And you can continue with another. You can go to minus 45, and then you have your results here. All right. Then you can continue like that. Have your results oh, and then you can press this button to clear everything all right so i added these two buttons over here and it's actually supposed to be the same button i don't know how to add over here all right so you have this to clear only one entry but i did not do the functionality of this button and that is on purpose okay i, I want you to be able to do this after this project sit down and work out how you can do this functionality on your own all right so let's get started first we have to create a folder for this project let's open up folder then create so let's call it calculator as simple as that and then go to vs code and open it from there now before you go ahead and create the files that we need for this project let me show you something I told you that um, whenever you are going to do a project, you need to sit down and then do a mock-up, okay? So this is my mock-up, right? I'm great at drawing, right? <laughs> Alright, so this is my mock-up. It doesn't have to be anything amazing. So um, this is a representation of what. So I did this before I started this project, okay? So just to show you how this works. So you have this mock-up one side and then you'll be looking at it and then you'll be working, alright? Let's go ahead and create our file. So first we need... Of course, our index.html. And then we need a folder CSS. And inside that folder, we need the style.css. And then we need another folder, call it JS. And inside it, we need the um, main.js. All right. So let's go into our HTML file. Let's get the boilerplate code. Change this to calculator. Now we will link our CSS. Okay, we'll be using the link tag. All right, so you see type text stroke CSS relationship style sheet. And finally, href CSS stroke style.css nice okay so let's go and test our css and see if it has been linked right actually we don't need to do that for now we'll do that later let's go ahead and link our javascript as well so we have the script tag okay and we have the source as js slash main dot js then we close our script tag like that okay so as you can see from here all right we have a container that will contain the whole um, calculator, all right? And inside it, we have a number of rules. We have this rule, this first one over here, where we have the content, all right? The content that will be displaying, all right? And below it, inside this container over here, we have four, five rules. So there's this rule, there's the second rule, the third rule, the fourth rule, and the last rule so each of these rules is going to be a div on its own with its content right so this just um, a summary of the, how the structure of our uh, site is going to be like okay so let's go ahead of course all the time we want to create a section and in this case this project is not um, a whole website so we don't need the navigation bar the header and all that all right so we just we are just going to create one um, section all right 
and then we call it calc right we give it the id of calc and inside the section we want to first we want an h2 remember that when i opened it we have on top here we had um, a line that says my calculator okay that line is an h2 we give it the class we give it the class of title all right and then we call it my uh, calculator all right next we'll create the div for this um we create the div or the container that will hold everything so this entire container so we will see div and we want to give it a class of container And then inside it will have the individual rules the first rule the second one this one that one right so first let's create this rule that contains the content okay so we have a div i told you each of the rules is going to be a div on its own so a div with a class of content rule now let me tell you something okay when i'm going through with you like this it looks like i know i have everything figured out already okay and for most courses out there that is what they make it look like so it's like they are doing i'm typing line by line line by line it's it's like i know everything that's going to happen already actually that is not how it happens really okay so the way i'm just going through with you like this is not how it happens really but if i say i'm going to go through from scratch with you then it's going to take a whole lot of time okay so before i came to do this lesson with you i have already put together the project okay and it took a lot of work it's not how i'm going to smoothly do it here all right so it took a lot of work it took a lot of try and error i put a figure or i put maybe a color i look at it this, this doesn't match i put um, a digit image be pardon and then go and check oh no it doesn't match i forget some content i back i come back and then put it in there all right so that's how it that's what it takes to actually put together a project it's not as smooth as i'm going to do with you here but for the sake of time i i'm i'm i'm, I'm referring to what i've already done and then i'm going through it with you so it might look like um i find it very simple that's not the case all right so in that rule we have two items okay so we have the first line over here where we have um uh what's the the, the the commands or the numbers that we are typing that we are going to calculate we have them here and we have this one here where we have the results and there are two divs on their own so this div covers all this area all the way up here and then this second one also covers all the way up here and as you can see this one is fluted to the left and this one is fluted to the right we'll do that in css but for now let's add them to our html okay so actually let me um launch it on the live server all right so we'll be going between this one and then the live server yes so this is our live save over here all right so we want to um create those divs those two divs so we want to div want to give it a class of entering space all right that is the space where we'll be entering the numbers that we are going to calculate and then we want to want to give it an idea of entering space all right then we want to close it and for now we want to put a figure of zero there okay this will change it with javascript all right and then we want to add the next one which is also a div with a class of results space where the results will be displayed all right and an id of results space as well okay and once again we'll put zero here just as a placeholder all right so that is it for the first rule this rule all right let's go to the next rule which is this part over here all right i like to give um, spaces between my code just to make it look neat so i'll go to the next line over here and then i'll create the next rule so the next rule we are going to have five similar rules actually this one that one and uh, all these five they are actually similar as you can see so we are going to give them the same class so that we can style them similarly right so each of these divs okay the rules is going to have the class of rule and they are going to have one additional class for a bit of special styling okay so we want to give them a class and each of them will have a class of rule all right and this being the first one we'll give it another special class of rule one 
so that in case you want to give it a specific styling just for that row, all right? And inside the row, as you can see, we have a number of buttons, okay? So we have this button, that button, that button, and then so four buttons, all right? So we have a button, and you want to give it a class of button, okay? That's the first class. And all the buttons on the page will have this button um, class because you want to give them similar styling, all right? We'll go ahead and give it an ID of, and we'll call this ID the clear, um, uh, the clear button. Okay, no clear or button. All right, so that's this button over here, which is the button that we click to clear everything, like that. Okay, and inside it we'll put C dot O, which is which stands for clear O. All right, and the next button is going to be this clear button which is represented by C. So we'll add a button one more time. Actually, let's um, copy and paste this line four times and then um, add the differences, okay? So this ID is going to be, we won't give this any special ID because we won't give it any um, special JavaScript features. So we move this ID from there, all right? And then we'll change the text content to just C like this and for this one to we change it to just C and then we remove the ID as well and then this one would be the division symbol over here so the division button all right and even though I wrote it division over here we are going to use this for it slash okay that's um, the division operation for JavaScript and I'll remove this and then I'll save. So this is what we have. These are our four buttons. The clear or the clear, clear, and then the division button. All right. So we are going to do this that this um, four times, sorry, five times as you can see. So we have this one, that one, that line, that line, and then the last line over here. All right. So instead of um, typing everything over again, let's just copy. Okay, this line. Copy and then paste it four more times. All right, so we've copied and pasted it four more times, and then we are going to change a few things over here to fit the contents that we have here. So in the second one, all right, this will be um, this will be row two, like this, and then instead of clear or button, we are going to have we are going to remove this ID because it's not going to be the clear or button. And the content is going to be the number over here, which is seven. All right. And then over here, it's going to be eight. And then this one is going to be nine. And the last one is going to be the X button, which is for multiplication. So we just put the number X. And as I said, they will all have the class of button. Okay, and just so that we will um, add some special styling to the numbers, as you can see from the results that I showed you before, they have different um, styles. So let me show you again. So as you can see from here, the number buttons have a slightly different styling from all these special or functional buttons over here. And that's um, to add those special functions, of course, uh, special um, styling, of course, we need to give them a special class so we are going to give all the number buttons a special class of number button like this all right so we'll do this for all the numbers okay so let's use what we did for um Let's do what we did for this row two for the rest of the rows by replacing them with the content that we have here. And also wherever there is a number, we will add the number button class. All right, so we've added all the different um, um, changes that we have to do, to do for each of the rules. Let's save it and see what we have. So this is what we have for now. So on the first row, we have the clear or clear, clear, and then we have seven, eight, nine, 
and the multiplication sign four five six minus one two three plus and then zero zero dot equal to we take care of the double zero later all right so we also want to add a spe some special styling to all the functions um, these ones because as you can see from here all these have a special um, a similar style right so we want to add a class that we use for doing this right and this class we are going to call the functional button class all right so let's go ahead and add the functional button classes all right so um this one here is a functional button right so let's select all the elements that will be given the functional button class so hold down the alt key and then sorry you press here the first one you hold down the alt key press the next one still holding down the next key the next one next one all right they are okay so these ones are also functional buttons and then we can add our class all right okay so what next for the html over here all right so believe it or not that is all we need for our html for now if there's something that we've missed out we'll come and then add it as we go along let's dive into the css right before we go ahead let me quickly let you know that um this may not be the best way to put the ch html together for such um a project you know the arrangement of the calculator if you remember how it looks okay where we have these arrangements there are better ways of doing it but the focus of this project is not um, html or css it's the javascript so you don't worry much about that the, um, a better way to do it probably will be using the grid css okay you can check up on that css grid or grid css right it's a special um it's a small library of css you can check up on it and then maybe using bootstrap which we'll be looking at later but the focus of this project as i mentioned is the javascript so let's go ahead to the css and put something together all right so first we want to give some general styling let's give the root elements which is the html let's give it some background okay we want to give it some background color we want to give it rgb um, 201 193 and then 193 again all right save it all right so this is the background color we have here next will be the resets so we want to set the margin um, and the padding to zero all right okay all right now let's edit the title here this title the my calculator title right so first we'll go to the um the ID that we gave it, which was the, the ID of the section, which is this calculator. Mm, let's give it a width and set it to 100%. So th that is for the section. Now let's look at the title itself. All right. So we give it the, um, the class of title. And then first we want to align the text. All right. We want to align it to the center. And then we want to give it a bit of margin at the top. As you can see, it's too close to the top. Okay, we want to give it 10 pixels. And then we want to change the font family. We want to give it some style. We want to make it look cursive. All right? So any cursive font family will be okay for us. And then we want to change the font size. Let's make it a bit bigger. Make it about 40 pixels. And of course, we want to make it a bit heavier as well. So we want to give it font width of older and finally let's add some color give it the blue color All right let's save it and see what we have All right there you go so it looks looks like what um, you expect it to be All right the next thing would be the container of the calculator itself remember the calculator is wrapped in the container when I bring up our mockup right so this container over here the entire container let's give it some styling all right so once again we'll, we'll go to the section id and then the uh, the class is sorry container 
want to give it a width of 350 pixels so that it looks quite nice on every any any screen at all I want to give it a margin of 0 or 2 to center it right because the width is 300 pixels which means it is not taking the entire um, um, width right so there will be spaces around it and we use this margin 0 or 2 to center it and then we want to align all the text in it to center once again then we want to give it some margin top so that it's not too close to the title and we want to give it 10 pixels that should be fine we also want to give it background color All right we want to give it rgb 126 um, 84 and then 30 Remember I said this one takes a bit of try and error. It's not it's not like I'm just <laughs> pouring it out of my head, all right? So we have to test around using the methods that we've looked at earlier. All right, so let's give it some padding around, some nice padding around. So we want to give it 50 pixels, okay? Uh, sorry, 50 pixels at the top and bottom. As you can see, it's too close to um, the edges, right? So that's why we are giving it 50 pixels down, 50 pixels at the top. And then on the sides, um, we want to give it 20 pixels. We don't want it. To, we don't want too much space on the side. There you go. So when we work on this text, it will expand to fit in nicely, and you see that the pattern on the left and right is actually smaller than what it looks like it is now. All right. So as you can see from our mockups, we have about five major rules. So we have this rule up here where we have the um, content being displayed. And then we have um, in the main body of the calculator, we have five rules. So we have the row one, row two, row three, row four, and then row five. And that is what we did in the HTML, right? So each of the rules had a class of row, each of them, okay, every single one of them. And then they individually too, they had their special um, classes. Let's go back to the HTML and look at that. So they all have this row, row, row class which we use to give them a similar editing and each um, each of them also has its own special class which is this row one row two row three um, in that order and then we use that to give them their special styling all right so let's go ahead and edit the give them the general style which is the rule right we might not even need um, individual styling for them so the class was rule and we want to give it all we want to do here is just to give it a margin Okay, I want to make it zero and then we want to um, auto so that everything is nicely centered. All right. So remember that the individual buttons had the I am um, the class of button. Okay, so they all had the class of button. So let's give it a style so that they look more like a button. Okay, if there's anything we, uh, we need to add to the rule, we'll come back and then add it later. All right, so want to see dot button. And we want to give it a width of 80 pixels. 80 pixels. And I want to give it height of 60 pixels. All right. Also want to give it margin around so that they are not too close to each other like they currently are. So five pixels on the top and down. And then we want to auto it on the left and right. We also want to give it some border radius. As you can see from our, um, from our mockup, the borders are rounded, right? So we want to give it a border radius and we want to give it eight pixels so that we have some nice round borders. We want to, find, we want to increase the size of the text to large. And finally, we want to give it some font weight. We want to increase the weight to 500. Let's see what you have nice and beautiful so this is what we have for now now the next thing to edit would be or to style would be this um part here the content part where we which we give the class of content rule right where we enter um the number and where we get the resource right so let's give that um, a bit of styling okay so the class of content rule We like this I think and once again want to give it a width of 330 pixels All right so you see that we give the container 350 pixels and we are giving it 330 pixels which leaves 20 pixels to be shared around it 
right so yeah we have some nice um space around it right so we want to give it a margin and we want to give once again five pixels on the top and down and we want it to auto on the left and right all right so we want some border okay this is the border i'm talking about so you can see there's um some border oh sorry i'm talking about the content too so this border over here this nice white border okay so want to give it some border right so want the border to be two pixels want it to be solid and want it to be of the color i want to give it the color white which is fffff as you know already so want to give the border a radius so that it's a bit rounded want to make it eight pixels once again that should be fine and finally want to increase the font sorry want to give it a position um relative that's because you want to give the children that it has okay it's children which is the um this i am um, div and that div the entering space div and the result space div right so once again looking at our final work this piece here this is the entering space this is the result space and we want to give them some positioning and remember we said that if you want to use um positioning the parents if you want to use absolute positioning the parent has to have some positioning mainly um, the relative position and that's why we gave the relative position over here let's save it and see what we have i think it's looking quite good now all right moving on all right so from our final work you can tell the numbers and the special buttons do not have the same style the special buttons have what we currently have but the numbers have a more rounded um, shape all right and let's go ahead and give them that styling as well as this as well as this zero and then this dot button they also have different styling so we give them those styling let's go ahead and add um the styling to the number button all right so the class let me see what class we used all right so we use the class number button as we have it here so we see dot number button like this all right so we want to give it a height now to make it round remember how we said that the height and the width has to be the same all right and once you have the height and width being the same you give it border radius of 50 percent and it should become completely round okay so let's give it um height and width of 80 pixels and now we can give it um a border radius border radius of 50 percent and that should make it nice and round beautiful so there you have it one last thing let's give it a bit of um, background color All right something a little different I'm going to give it background color of um, CE, CEC9, and then C9. Beautiful. So this is what, what we have so far. The next thing is the dot, the zero and the dot button. Before that, we actually, we have two zeros here. We have to remove one. Remember, we added that just so that we have the nice arrangement. But now we can remove one and then edit the other one to look nicer in that space. So let's remove one of them. Save. All right. So let's edit this one to fill the space of both. So, uh, of course, you have to give it a special class in order to do this. So you want to give it the class of um, zero button like that. Save it. Okay. Dot. Um, and now we can give it our special styling. So we want to give it a width. Right. We want it to be longer so that it fills both spaces. So you see 160 pixels, and we want to. Um, Give it a height 
of 60 pixels right just like the other buttons the other functional buttons and then finally I want to give it a border radius of 20 pixels save it beautiful so you can see our zero button is covering the entire space now let's now deal with the dot button this particular button over here of course you have to give it a styling in order to get that okay so let's give it the um, special class of dots button like this save go back to our css remember if you don't save the html when you make the changes at the css it will not affect it so you have to save all right so we can have um go through the dots button and let's give it a height of 60 pixels and then we'll give it a font width of um, 900 so that it's the, the zero looks more obvious uh, sorry the dot looks more obvious it looks um, thicker and bigger all right finally let's give it a border radius of eight pixels as well all right so it, it's looking much much better now now of course if you look at our final work here the functional buttons had uh, have a special style um, which is the color they have a different color so let's go ahead and add their special styling to them all right so we give them the class of functional button so we said functional button like this and then let's give it of course the background color and we'll give it uh, this weird color that i found to be quite nice all right then we want to give it a color of rgb that is the color of the text itself all right we are giving the text itself a different color so we want to 6 84 and then 30. all right now let's increase the font size a bit want to give it 20 pixels and then finally let's increase the font width want to make it bolder let's see what we have mm, much better much better so it's looking much much better now right so let's compare this with our final projects so we have a very few things to go first is this um result space entrance space over here all right the content area and of course we need to give the container this nice border this nice rounded border we also look at that all right so before we go ahead and look at the content area let's um give our container a border all right so want to give the container a border want to set it to three pixels and then want it to be solid and want the color to be rgb mm, 53 50, 32 53 32 and four all right uh, now we have the border so let's give it some radius Let's give it a radius of 20 pixels. Okay, so I think it should be looking exactly like what we have. Right, but you can see this um, one looks taller than on this side, and that's because of this content area that we, we are yet to edit. So once we finish with that, it should look exactly the same. All right, so first the entering space, which is the first one over here, we want to um, position that one on the top left and then we want to position the result um, space on the um, down right over here so let's see how we do that using css right so you see um, let's first go to the um, entering space and we want to first of course give it some font size we want to increase the text to 30 pixels make it more obvious and then we want to give it some padding around as you can see it's too close to the edges like at the top right so you want to give it some padding we want to give it five pixels all around okay and then we want to position it 
I'm going to give it an absolute position. And this is why we give the parents a relative position, right? Okay. Now, we have our absolute position. So this is it over here. So we have to use the top left, um, right, bottom key to, um, keywords to give it a particular position. So we want it to be at the topmost leftmost part. So to do that, you say top, okay, zero, right? That is zero from the top to the topmost. And then you want to say left, okay? You want to say zero for that one too, which means on the leftmost side, right? So this is what we have. All right, so let's deal with the result space. By the time we are done, this the whole thing should be looking much better, All right? So that's result space. All right. Um, of course, once again, let's give it the font size. Actually, let me just copy this whole part. All right, let me just copy this whole part and paste that here okay it's all the same up to that point but i want to give it some padding bottom um want to give it some padding bottom of zero all right and then want to give it want to use the bottom right keywords want it that want this one to be on the bottom most and the right most so make it zero here and then right want to make it zero as well save it all right so this is what we have and something is definitely going wrong over here all right so it turns out we did not give our content to a height um, and that is evidenced by what we see over here so you see that this one is just a line it's supposed to be a whole round area right so um, I noticed we didn't give it a height right so let's go back to the content to over here and then let's add um, a height let's put it somewhere here so if you give it a height let's give it um, 80 pixels all right so there we have it now our project is looking nice all right so let's compare it to our target okay so I think there's no difference right now everything is looking as it should and that will bring us to the end of the CSS part of this project and I will see you in the next lesson. And now on to the part everybody has been waiting for, JavaScript time. So I usually like to do an arrangement like this, okay? So create variables, sorry. Um, three main parts, divide the code into three main parts. This part for variables, right? And then the other part for um, functions you don't necessarily have to do this but it helps sometimes to organize your code in this manner right so and this part for events okay and the reason is that the reason why i like to declare variables at the topmost part is that when you declare a variable after you call it or for you to be able to use a variable you may you must have declared it before all right that's why I like to declare the global variables at the topmost part of the code. Okay. As for functions, you can call them here in an event, even if you haven't declared them. So I could have brought the functions down here, which is no problem. But I find it that it makes more sense that you call um, the function after you've declared it. So you must have declared the function before you call it. Okay. You don't declare it and then you go and call it. Lit um, you don't call it and then you go and declare it later, even though it will work. All right. Okay, so first let's um, declare our variables over here. So remember that to declare multiple variables, um, you can do it this way. So first, so what you are going to do here is that you are going to grab all these buttons. So you grab the functional buttons, all right? You grab the number buttons and you know the entering space and all that. You grab the important um, elements that we need to grab. So first let's grab the clear all button and then name. Um, save it in a variable called clear all button okay and then we follow it up with the next variable here we are not assigning the variables yet we are just declaring them and then later we will assign their um, values right so also 
um, one declare button so we have two buttons right declare all button this is stands for clear all and then this is the clear button all right and then the next one would be the equal to button um, which you would name equal to so we are using the camel casing for everything every all our variables in JavaScript in HTML CSS I usually like to use um, hyphens all right but when it comes to naming variables in JavaScript I prefer using the camel casing right so next one would be the entrance piece uh, and then the results piece of course and operations button which will be for all the operations right let's make it operation button and then the number button like this or number buttons so operation buttons and number buttons because there are a lot of them let's save it so you see it's nicely arranged for us over here now we can set them to their variables okay so over here let's put a little um so over here we declare the variables and down here we can uh, get the um, or set the variables to the uh, html elements all right like that so let's first deal with the clear or button and then we want to document dot get element by id and remember this is just one element okay so we can use the id if there are multiple elements then you use the class name or use the query selector query selector all, all right so the um, class the id was clear or button like this that is back in our html that's how we um, named it all right so the next one would be the clear button not the clear or button the clear button and then we want to document dot get element id by id once again and the id was clear button like this the next one would be the entering space and we want to get documents um get element by id once again because it's just one element then we want to see entering space like this then we want to get the result space as well and document the get element by id and the id for that one that one is result space and notice how i add semicolons at the end of my code if you don't add them and you save it will actually be added for you as you can see what just happened but it's better to add them yourself all right so the next one will be the operation buttons all right and we said to document dot get elements by id sorry these are buttons these are a number of buttons so we use get elements by class name okay so you realize that this is get elements by class name all right like this and then what is the class names that we give them that would be the number sorry operation um, button um, like this i think and then we can copy and paste that one and change this to um, changes to number button number buttons and change this to number button all right finally we would have the equal to button which is just one button so use the get element by id and then we set it to um, i think equal um, to button something like this all right now one thing i like to do after declaring my variables is that i like to check and confirm that um i have actually been able to grab all the buttons so how i do that is by logging them to the console okay and this is one of the most fundamental debugging skills that you 
have to know right when you say debugging debugging is simply finding errors in your code right so what i can do is that um i can log i can do console.log okay for all the variables okay so i can do for clear button and then i can do for and two three, four five six i think that's i can do for clear all button All right, so you can do for all the all the buttons just like I've done here. You can actually even add labels to make them clearer as we've been doing. So you can see a clear um, or button, and then you can do that for all the others as well if you like. All right, so I think that will be um, the main part for our variables for now. Let's go ahead and write some events. All right, so there's quite a few num um, quite a number of events that you are going to need. Um, remember that we said events include clicks, right? And over here, the main events that we'll be dealing with is the click event. Okay, so you're going to we are going to take an a click event whenever the user clicks on a number. That is one event that we have to listen for, or when the user clicks on one of the functional buttons, we have to also listen for that and pick whichever um, operator. Sorry, the operator that the user clicks. Right, and also um, on any of the functional buttons, which is the clear, mainly here the clear or buttons. Um, and then we have to also um, listen for an event um, the, on the equal to button. All right, so let's deal with them one after the other. First, let's look at a click on the number because that's what every user will first do. Right, so um, when a user clicks on a number, what happens? Now, for us to be able to tell what user what number the user clicked on, all right? One way to do that is to by adding a special ID to each of the number so that when a user clicks on seven, we know we pick the, we use the ID to know the user clicked on seven, but that would be um, too many unnecessary codes. So what we do here is that we've set all the numbers, okay? Every element here with the class of number button, we've set it to um, a variable number buttons, right? So what this number buttons returns okay let me go and show you in the console that we logged all right so if you if you look here you can see that we have um an html collection for the number buttons as well as the operation buttons so this is it for the number button so as you can see from here there are quite a number of elements okay so what you are going to do is that you are going to loop over these elements all right we we'll loop over these elements and see which one the user clicked all right i'll show you in a bit how to do that all right this is supposed to be the um html collection for the operation buttons but it's showing empty here which is a problem it means something went wrong in our um, variables. All right, so remember how I told you that um, having basic debugging skills can be very, very useful. So I just, it just um, became useful to me over here, all right? By logging out all the elements that I grabbed here, I realized that my um, operation buttons are not being logged, okay? So as you can see, as I said earlier, it is showing an empty um, um, collection. Meanwhile, we are expecting some element okay the operation buttons which is the equal to the plus the minus multiplication and division we are expecting them here but we are not seeing them and that means there's something wrong all right and checking um our html i realized we didn't actually add these um, classes which is the operation button so we have to add that class to all the operations that we have all right so let's go ahead and then the, and then add it to all our operation so i want to highlight all of them together so here uh, this is also an operation button another operation button and this is the last operation button i think four of them all right so give them the class of operation button all right and i think it should work now all right so there you have it so we have um our operation buttons being logged over here Right, let's go back into our JavaScript and then <coughs> continue with our code. Right, so this is how you use the 
um, console.log as a debugging tool can be very, very useful as you just witnessed. All right, let's close this and then continue with our... All right, so let's look over the number buttons that is returned to us. All right, so... So how, let's see how we do that. Let's write a simple um, comment over here. So we want to loop over the number, um, number buttons and add event listener, listeners, okay? All right, so over here, what you are going to do is that you are going to loop over all the numbers that is returned to us and add an event listener to each one of them. All right, so remember how we loop over a collection or an array, it's the same thing over here. Use the for, okay? You can say for let's, um, so far we've been ignoring the let keyword, but you can actually add it because you are essentially creating a variable. So let i equals zero. Sometimes in some kind of um, editors, they may um, disagree with you not including the let element. Okay, i less than, um, of course, numbers, number buttons dot length. I hope you remember how we do all this. Uh, this is not a comma, this is supposed to be a semicolon. And then finally, I plus plus. All right, so this is how we are going to be looking over. So when we look over, what do we want to do? First, once again, debugging, you can console.log the elements to see whether you've actually um your looping is actually working okay oops why am i why am i commenting this out? so you can console.log um num number buttons of i all right dot text content remember the text content okay so and this will print uh, or log to the console um the text of each of the numbers so it will log um, one, two, three, four, five, all the way to seven. So let's save it and see it in action. Yes, so as you can see over here, you see that all the numbers have been looped. All the elements with the um, class of number has have been logged to the console, right? So it means our loop is working nicely, all right? So once we've looped over the numbers, what do you want to do? So we can... Um, Comment out this once you know it's working. We don't want too many console logs, right? So we want to add um, event listeners to the numbers. So number of i dot add event listener, right? And what event do you want to add? We want to add a click event, right? And then we want to call a function, right? Now this might be a bit tricky, but let me show you. So we want to call the function get clicked element okay or get click number sorry this is what you want to call the function all right now remember that we said over here in the add event list now you don't actually call the function you pass a reference to the function okay so you don't include the open and close parenthesis when you do that you are actually calling the function but you don't want to call it here because you want it to be clicked before it it is called so you pass a reference to the function and this is how you pass a reference and this should be enough but in this particular case you want to pass a parameter to this function now for you to be able to add a parameter you can't um, uh, add a parameter without the parenthesis for calling the function right now the way for you to be able to actually write a function okay and then add um, parameters okay in an event listener is first to create an, an anonymous function okay you create an anonymous function and inside the function you call this function okay let me show you what i mean so first you create an anonymous function all right so function um anonymous because it doesn't have a name so like this and then um you open and close the parenthesis and inside here you call the function that you wanted to so which is the get clicked um number okay and now we can add a parameter which is um, event i'll show you what this parameter does all right so now we can pass a parameter but remember that there's a simpler way of doing this using the um, esc's method the arrow function okay so we can use parenthesis all right 
and then equal to like this and just this you've created a function once the fat array is there all right and then you you name the function so actually everything we are doing here is inside the function so normally we would have parentheses here okay like we'll do for a function okay but when your function when your code is just one line you don't need the parentheses that's why i ignored the parentheses all right so now we can add our um, parameter which is the event parameter now this event is um, a very important parameter what it does is that when you pass it to this function over here when you go and create the function you can actually assess the content of the event so for example when i click on the number here okay an event will be fired okay now one thing i can use the parameter for is to get the targets the, the element that was clicked okay which is called the target so when i click here i can go through the event parameter and say event dot target which is to say that i want the particular element in the event that was um, fired all right so you see it used um pretty soon all right so now that we've um called an event now that we've created an event let's go ahead and create its corresponding um function all right so we call the function get clicked number right okay like this using the es style now we pass the parameter which is event and we have to pass the argument for the parameter and we can type we can use event once again but to make it simple use e since you've already passed the event as parameter the e here would mean the event remember what parameter argument does all right like this and all right so inside here this is where we are going to try to get the particular number that was clicked all right first when someone clicks okay when you click a number first you want to make sure that you remove this zero and replace the zero with the number that was clicked all right and how do we remove the zero we want to use an if statement okay and inside the if statement we want to say entering space which is this space right dot text content is equal to zero okay so essentially um a string zero not number zero because everything we are typing here is string unless we convert it to number which we'll do later okay so it, what we are saying here is that if the entering space dot text content is equal to zero all right that is if there's nothing there what do we want to happen we want to entering space dot text content we want to first remove the zero from there all right so we want to make it empty okay so let's see our progress so far let's click something did you see that so you see it has been erased all right let me refresh and show you so zero is there i click a number now the zero is gone because you've replaced it with an empty space all right the next thing we have to do sorry All right, so going back to debugging once again, we can um, actually check to make sure that we got <coughs> the proper element that we are expecting, the element that we clicked. And to do that, once again, we use console.log. So let me add um, uh, some comments here. So check to make sure that we are getting the elements that um, was clicked. Or well, let me just make it the clicked element right or or number okay so how do you do that you can console.log um so you can console.log something like you clicked this is just the label and we can add the target okay remember i told you what this event 
um, parameter that so you can say e or event dot target dot text content content like this and then we can console dot like that and we can check the type of that and we are expecting that the type will be a string so you can see type you can see type of um, e dot target dot text content all right let's save it see what we have so far all right oh sorry we didn't click anything at all <laughs> let's click something and then check all right so as you can see we have eight and then the type is string right so i can click four and then you as you can see you clicked four and so it's working fine all right let's go back to our code now the next thing we want to do is to save or enter the number that we clicked into the entering space okay now we've successfully cleared the space when we click the number now i want to put the number there so when i click seven i want seven to appear here all right so let me add so save uh, the clicked number to um first let's save it into a variable all right so we will save so we save constant clicked um let's name it clicked number all right so this is the number that has been clicked and we are saving it in a variable so we say e dot target remember how we got the number is by going e dot target the text content like that and now let's of course add the clicked elements or number into the um entering space and we do that by saying entering space dot text content all right and we say plus equal to click number now why are we not just saying equal to click number but we are saying plus equal to click number the idea is that when you say plus click number then when i type a number see seven it will add the seven now when i type another number it will replace it right but when i say plus equal to right so if i say plus equal to, that means when i type type seven it will add seven the next time i type five or i click five it will add the five to the seven so that we have 75 and all this while we are dealing with strings okay so later on when we want to do the mathematics then we would um convert it to numbers all right so let's save it and see it in action all right so click seven so seven is there you see what's going on here let me click eight so you see 78 like that all right so so far so good everything has been working let's fight on and get the rest of the code done so the next thing that we need to do is to listen for clicks on the operator elements okay so the times division minus and then plus operators we need to listen for a click so what you are going to do is that you are going to look over the variable that we created here which was the operation buttons okay which returns us a list all right so you are going to look over this list and then um add an event listener to them so see loop over the number sorry operator buttons and add events listeners to them all right so once again we write a for loop so let i equals to, i equal to um zero i less than um operations button operation buttons dot length and then i plus plus right like we always do and then inside here we want to loop over the operation buttons of i then we want to add event listener and the event you want to add, listen for is a click event and just like we did for the number buttons you declare an anonymous variable and then you add um, our function and then pass the function the event parameter so we call this function the get clicked operator all right 
like this and then we'll pass it the events parameter all right so you see this red line here which means that we are missing something and i think it's the arrow here the fat arrow is not complete so we have to make it this way all right so let's go back up to where we have our functions and then create our get clicked operator uh, get clicked um, operator function so we see get clicked operator and we add the event arguments now once again we are going to write an if statement to check whether the um, entering space is zero right so if the entering space is zero then we don't want the user to be able to click anything so if i show you the final results right so once this place is zero if i click any of the operators it won't do anything because it makes sense that once there's nothing nothing has been entered then you can't do any operation right and that's why we need to do that all right so we won't say if um entering space is equal to um sorry ent entering space dot text content all right if it's equal to zero like this then what we want to do we want to return all right remember what the return keyword does when you have the return keyword it means i don't want to run the rest of the code it means that's where the code ends okay so when you add the return keyword in here what is it essentially means is that it will check whether the entering space is zero and once the entering space is zero then it will return um it will return like it will leave the code and it will not run the rest of the code that we are going to write here all right so now what you are going to do is that once the user clicks on a an operator you want to change the styling of the operator right to show that that operator has been clicked okay so once the event dot target to get the particular element or the operator that was clicked so event dot target now if you console dot log event dot target you realize that it is the element that has was clicked so if i click on divide the target will be the element that contains the divide operator so you want to event dot target dot style remember the style um, method so dot style then you say dot background color right remember how we write css in javascript okay you join them you don't use the hyphen you see vendor style dot background color then we set it to green all right let's test it and see if it's working okay so you can see it's zero so when i click nothing is happening now let's enter some keyword did you see that so it's see change to green all right so it's working so far what again do you want to change want to um once again take the targets dot style dot want to change the text color right and then we want to set the text color to white which is one two three four five six six f's so if i click now click so it's looking much better now all right now the next thing to do is to actually grab the elements or the operator that was clicked so you we'll call it the clicked operator okay we create a variable and call it the clicked operator but then um i realized we'll be needing this variable in multiple functions we will use it in this get clicked operator function and we will need it in the function where we will be um getting the using um, calculating the results and everything so we need to make it a global variable once you need to use um uh, a variable in other functions then that's the the time to use a global variable when you use when you create it locally in this function then it means that when you go to another function and you are trying to use it you'll not be able to assess it right like this click number um, um click number here all right it is local to this function so when you try to assess it outside that function you will not get it right so i'll go outside to where we declared our um variables and then i will declare the clicked operator without assigning it any value and then inside our get clicked operator you can assign it a value so i'll just add um, a bit of a comment here so i'll say that i want to declare the clicked um, operation right to make it global 
okay all right so let's go back into our function now we can set and um, we can give it um, a value okay so we see that clicked operator wait did we sorry <laughs> i just wrote the um, the comments without actually declaring the variable where did i do that All right so so i see that let's okay i remember when you use the constant keyword you can't change it so in order to declare and use it set a variable a value later then you have to use the let keyword so you see let's um click operator like this right now we've declared it and then we can give it a value here so click operator is equal to um e dot target dot text content okay i hope you remember this so we want the clicked operator and we said that use the event um parameter right so you use the event and then you go to the target of the event which will give you the particular element and it was the text content okay so if i click this one this one is now the event um this is the element that was clicked so that is the target and the text content of this is the minus over here so that's what we are looking to grab here so what you want to do is that we want to go to the entering space now we are going to add whatever that was clicked to the entering space so we see entering space dot text content okay just like we did for the clicked number right so we say entering space the text content plus equal to okay now we want some space between the number that was um, um, clicked and then the the operator so we we'll give some space here then we say plus right then we now bring our clicked operator and then we we'll give some space again because you we can we'll be following it up with another number so we want some space after the operator right let's save it and see what we have so far so if i click eight click times so you see what we have there right if i add another number so you see it's working nice now okay there you go all right so we implement the other functionalities as you go on okay so now we want to um you see once a user clicks a number all right let me refresh this page once a user clicks a number here okay and they click an operator okay what you want to do is that you want to now disable all the operators so that the user cannot click an operator twice like we are having here or click this operator and then click another follow it up with another operator so once a user click an operator once we want to disable all the other all the operators including the one that was clicked right so we can do that by looping over the um all the operators so we use the for um loop once again so for i equals zero i um is less than operation buttons dot length all right i plus plus okay and then we use an if statement so we say that if entering space okay dot text content is not equal to zero and this is how you do it so remember this not okay symbol by here so this means it's not equal to zero all right so if it's not equal to zero that is to say that if there's something in the entering space if it is not zero then we want to op um, disable all the operation buttons that is to say that if the user enters something so that the entering space is not um, zero now okay we want to disable okay we want to set the disabled to true and this is how you do it this is a very special keyword the disabled okay once you have a button okay once you have something that has an element that is a button and you set disabled to true it means that the button will be automatically disabled and it cannot be clicked right so if i save this and right now you see that the buttons are clickable all right now when i type something press a keyword now all these buttons will be disabled so when i click you see that nothing happens okay you see that it's not being clicked look at it so when it's clicked you see how you see the effects when it's actually clickable but when it's not clickable 
you see it doesn't react at all so all these buttons have now been disabled okay so after disabling it you want to give the other buttons apart from the one that was clicked you want to give them um some uh styling to make them look like they've been you know uh they've been grayed out and are not usable all right and we can do that once again with another if statement okay so we say if operation buttons dot of i okay dot text content of i because you are in a loop is not equal to the clicked operator that is if it is not the one that has been clicked then you want to set the operations operation buttons of i that particular button which is all the other buttons that have not been clicked you want to set the background color to this color over here a eight a four a four right let's save it and see what we have so far so i click seven times so you, as you can see they've all been grayed out to show that they are not active any more all right so the next thing we need to do is to um apply the clear all button functionality over here so once we've typed all these things you want to be able to click this button and then everything will be cleared okay so to do that um it's simple we just have to set the content of the entrance space okay the text content to zero and then reverse all the styling that we added to the buttons okay so first of course we need an event listener all right so you can put an event listener here so we have the button already saved as clear or button and then we add an event to it and the event would be a click event all right so we will of course set um reference to a function we'll call that function the reset things okay so essentially we are going to reset things all right and over here we will not um add the event target because you will not be grabbing any the element that was clicked directly so we just pass the reference to the function and then we will go up and then create the function all right so let's create the function over here below the get clicked operator function so we want to call this function reset things all right and then because we don't have any parameter or we will not have any arguments here as well all right first you want to console.log um this, this is just to check whether everything is working fine you want to console.log something okay so clear or button has been clicked just to make sure that the button is working properly all right okay so now as we said we just have to set the entry space the text content of the entry speed to zero sorry not the text content in this case let's use inner html okay remember inner html just it works similar to the text content but this one just replaces the html inside the element okay so we can actually use text content it still doesn't um, change much but just for some difference let's use inner html it's supposed to be inner html like this all right okay so let's try it out and see if it's working okay so it's working now now the next thing to do is to reverse all these styling that we added to the buttons okay so we want to loop over the buttons again Want to say uh, let i equals um i equals zero i less than operation buttons dot length right i plus plus now want to of i dot disabled so we want to set the disabled to false so that they are not disabled anymore okay so we want to set it to false and then we want to change the color back to what it originally was 
okay the background colors of i dot style dot background color I want to set it to it was, it was originally this belly wood all right and then finally the text color finally the text color I want to set that one to um, RGB um, one two six eighty four thirty like that and that should work okay so let's test and see what's going on reset okay so you can see everything has now been reset to the original so we are coming to the end of our project All right so now we are going to deal with the results okay we are going to do the, cal the necessary calculations to get the results of our operation so now our calculator is able to take in values add an operation or an, an operator taking a second value and then click the equal sign but when you click the equal sign you notice nothing happens all right so we have to add an event listener to this equal sign so that when um, the user clicks the equal sign you get the results all right so let's go ahead and add an event listener to the equal sign so i'll add a comment here that says um something like what happens um when the user clicks the equal sign all right so we say equal button equal to button dot add event listener and the event listener we want to add is the click event and then you want to call a function all right um you want to call this function gets resource results like this all right we don't act we actually don't need to pass the events um, parameter here all right so let's go back up and then create this function so then we'll go under the reset things to so call it get results all right and yes so now of course as a form of debugging you can console.log something here to make sure your event listener is working so you can add something like um equal to button was clicked or something whatever so you can check the console for this and make sure it is happening there all right and then we want to create a variable to hold our results so we want to call this variable results okay but we will set the value now we will set the value after we've done the calculation all right now what i want us to do is you know for there to be um for us to have um a valid uh input here there must be at least three numbers okay or three elements the first number the operation sign and then the second number so what i want us to do here is to write an if statement that checks to see whether if if the numbers are up to three if the elements are up to three okay if the content here is not up to three then the equal to sign button will not be usable all right so we write an if statement which says which checks the entering space the text content of the entering space now it wants to check the length of the ent um, entering space we want to see if it is less than three like this okay if it's less than three then we want to return which means you want to um, log like move out of the code of the function and then not run the rest of the function okay otherwise we want to continue our function so we want to so essentially how we are going to do this is that you see there are there are two numbers here now the first number and then the second number right which we want to um, calculate okay so since the user clicked the modification we know that we are we are going to need to multiply it so first we have to get the first number and we have to also get the second number and remember that the numbers currently are everything here is a string so once we get the numbers we have to convert them to actual numbers right so how, how we are going to do this is that 
we are going to split this string okay using the javascript split method all right and we are going to split it so that we are going to split it by this remember the how we use the split method so you define what splits it so if you define to split it by a space then it will be split and the split method returns um, um an array right so an array so that if you use split by the space it will split them here and by here as well okay so that you have 78 as one element or one item of the array then you have x as another item of the array and then you have 45 as the other item of the array but we don't for here we just want to grab the individual numbers you already have the clicked operator saved in the um in the variable clicked operator but we just need the numbers so what you are going to do is that you are going to split the string okay by this whole part okay the empty space plus the operator that was clicked plus here now when you do that it will split it and then give us this will be the first item of the element and that will be the second item of the element hopefully you understood that all right so we are going to call this variable which is going to be the array that the um, numbers will be split into you call it numbers list or numbers array whichever you, you like so we, we say that entering space dot text content okay dot split now i want to split it and we want to split it by the whole um, area that i described the space plus the clicked operator all right and this is why we needed to make the clicked operator global variable because you'll be using it in this function and we've already used it in the other function all right and then by the space once again hopefully you understand why we are doing this i just explained it okay okay so now we have it saved in the numbers list you can console.log it and check the console to see if it is um working all right so let me just put that here so you can check the numbers list to make sure it is working all right the next thing to do is to um check the two numbers all right so now we have an array actually let me um try it out for you to see how the split element is working for us so um, let me open my console okay so we have an error here that says on code type error cannot read property add events listener of now at line 113 line 113 which is this part here meaning there's something wrong with our code over there it cannot read it says um property of now meaning that there's no elements we are not listening over any elements okay so there's a spelling mistake here All right so it should go away now equal to button is not defined okay didn't we define equal to button before equal Oh, okay so we made a mistake in uh, declaring it as well so we just correct it and that should be fine mm, we are still getting the error oh, okay so we have to correct this part too all right so um the error is still there oh, okay that's oh then we made a, we made this fairly mistake a lot so it's this one is at line 30 let's see line 30 line 30 so what we should have done actually is that we use um the command plus d i think we've done before so that we select let me just show you what i mean okay so we select this this equal to the mistake okay and then we press Control plus D or Command plus D, and it will highlight all the occurrence of that word. And now we can correct it, and it will okay, correct everything wherever it occurs. All right, so it's working better now. Okay, I seem something is still wrong. All right, so what's happening is that um, we actually didn't declare this ID in our HTML, so we have to go back into the HTML. 
and then add it over here all right um it's supposed to be an id so you see add it an id and then the id is um equal to um button like this uh hopefully this will work all right so there's no more errors our error has been corrected now okay so what was i going to show you yes so i was going to show you um how the numbers list looks like okay it's an array of the two numbers that we've split all right so i'm going to try to expand this all right so let me type something then press the equal to button now this is our array okay this is our numbers array so you see that we now have two items in a list you know in an array the first item the second item now we can comfortably grab this element and convert it to a number grab this one convert it to a number and do whatever calculation we want to do with it okay so let's go back to our small okay so where did we get to yes the numbers list right so the next um, thing to do is to grab each of the numbers that were clicked so we want to create two constants so we want to call the first one constant um number one and then we set it equal to number remember the number keyword which is used to convert um any string to a number or any element you can actually convert a boolean to a number too remember zero converts to um uh, sorry true converts to um, false converts to zero and true converts to one all right so we want to grab the first element so of the numbers list so the first one remember how you do that that will be at the zero index all right and then we want to grab the second one we want to call it number two once again number and then we want to see numbers lists and we want to see numbers list of the indexed index one so you can console.log um each of these and then make sure they are working okay so let's put this under this one so we want to log number one we want to log number one and then we want to check the type of the number one all right then you do the same thing for you do the same thing for number two all right so let's do something let's type something and then go and check the console see what we have okay so let's check our console now all right so there you go so this is our first number this is our second number and they are both of the type number now so we've successfully converted them to numbers all right So the next thing to do is to um, do the do the calculation depending on whichever operator the user clicked. All right. So how do we know which operator the user clicked? How we do this is to use an if statement. Okay. So we want to say that if the user clicked on a division sim, um, division operator, then do number one divided by number two. If you click on a multiplication operator, do number two divided by sorry number one divide multiplied by number two if it's minus number one my in that order okay and this should be um easy to do all right so i want you to actually pause the lesson here and then try and do it your yourself and let's see how you do it so you can use the switch statement or you can use the normal if if else if else and then finally the else all right so give yourself a few minutes try to do this and let's see i'll be adding my solution um shortly all right so welcome back so let's see what how we are going to do this now we are going to have two if statements actually one living inside the other first we want to check to make sure that number one and number two are both present before you do the calculation because if you try to do the calculation when one of the numbers is not present you will have an error okay so you want to check to make sure that both numbers are present okay so once the um number list of the zero index okay it's not equal to sorry it's not equal to an empty list okay which means which is to say that it is actually present all right 
now remember that both numbers have to be present before this works okay and then that is an opportunity to use the logical operators okay the end operator the um all operator in this case we need to use the end operator because both conditions have to pass all right if you use the all operator it means only one of them have to pass so we use the end operator and in our uh, um, the lesson where we looked at the logical operators i made a very huge mistake over there where i used only one end one ampersand sign to represent the end operator which is not supposed to be so sorry about that when you use only one end it is called the bitwise operator now they work very similarly but sometimes you can run into error trying to use one as the other so it should be two ends like that and the same thing for the all operator it should be two pipes like that for the all operator so you don't see if this so since there are two let's put this um the first one in brackets that we don't have any issues all right and you want to see we want to do the same thing for the second one right the second number okay we also want to check if that one is not also equal to um we also want to check and make sure that that one is also not an empty list okay so once we confirm that both of them are not empty lists then you want to write a switch statement or you can use an if and if or else statement once again all right okay but over here let's give this if statement an else okay so we want to make sure that they, they are both present but if both of the numbers are not present or one of them is not present then we want to return we don't want you to do anything all right so let's go back into our if and then write our switch statement all right so the parameter that will be changing or the variable that will be changing in the switch statement is the clicked operator i hope you remember how the um, switch statement is used all right now I want to see case the division operator. Okay, so that is if the user clicked on the division operator. Case the division operator, we want to set the results. Okay, the result that we declared up there as a variable for holding the results. We want to say number one, number one, um, and then we want to say divided by number two, like this. And then we want to use the break keyword. Remember, you don't you can't forget the break keyword and then we want to set the second case would be if the user clicked the multiplication once now set the results equal to number one um, and in this case will be multiplied by number two all right and then use the break keyword once again um, the next case would be um, the minus right then in this case we want to set the result to number one minus number two then break finally for addition want to set the result to number one plus number two all right then we want to use our break keyword all right and you can add a default okay then the default um, you see maybe you set the results to something like and or just set it to error okay but the thing is that they most likely not be a default um here because there is a fixed number of um elements that can be clicked which is this four okay if there's there was a possibility of clicking another operator then that's but it's always to it's always best to take care of the worst scenario so we just add the default over here all right all right so we've done the necessary calculations and what we, ha we have to do now is to add the results that we've calculated over here to the both the entering space and then the results space, but mainly the results space. Okay, we want to add it to the entering space because 
the user might want to follow it up with another calculation all right like we have in our final results here okay so if the user let's see does um, maybe a calculation right then they get the results then they want to follow this one with another calculation they can actually do that right so that's what we want to take care of now all right but as you can see there's um this red underlining here which means there's something wrong in our code and i think we are missing a bracket a parenthesis over here so that should be fine all right so let's go on and of course i said we are going to add the results to the results piece so what you are going to put the results um in the results space okay so once the results space dot text content and want to set it to the results that we calculated dot now we see that when the user uses um some calculations okay when the user uses decimals you may have a very long i mean decimal okay so like five decimal places six decimal places we don't want such a calculation so we want to convert everything to a fixed number of decimal places so we want to convert in this case to two decimal places and you you do that using the dot to fix um, um method over here and then we want to take it to two decimal places and then we want to convert it to a string before we add that right okay so we want to convert it to string using the dot to string method so you have to do the same thing for sorry so we have to do the same thing for the entering space as you mentioned that if the user wants to continue with some more calculation the text content is equal to mm, results result dot to fix why didn't i just copy um dot to string okay so let's test and see what we have so far save and let's come back to our work so let's do some calculations just so that we have some decimals and then we can see if it will actually cut out the decimal places so equal to huh i think it's working quite nicely so we have only two decimal places and the result has been entered here and here as well okay let's try following it up with another calculation Hmm. so you as you can see we can't actually follow it up with another calculation because our operators are still disabled so what we have to do is that we have to reverse the um, disabling of the operator buttons as well as um, the styling that we give them so to do that we have to once again loop over the operator buttons just like just as we've been doing okay All right so we want to change the disabled to zero uh, sorry to false also we want to change uh, actually we have something like that at the um, resets function so let's just go and copy oops i'm lost all right so we are here okay so this should work perfectly so let's try again mm, nice all right so let's follow it up with another calculation okay so our buttons are still disabled which means our um, enabling them didn't work let's see what went wrong oh, okay so we have to add the eye here let's test again now it's working all right beautiful so now we can follow up with some more calculations you can go as far as you want all right so as you can see um i think there's something missing somewhere
Okay, so that brings us to the end of this project. I hope you've had a good time following this project. Um, I just want to let you know that um, you can do a lot more to this project. You can tweak things around. You can add more functionalities. You can add more operations. You can add square roots and all those things to make it more interesting. And also these um, buttons over here, you can give them some more use, some better use, okay? So we have a button that clears everything. How about a button that clears only one number? Okay, so you can use this C. That's what, that's what this C was supposed to be for, but I left it just for you so that you can also um, try your hands on it. So you can change this button to something and then give it some more functionalities. You can tweak things around and make it more um, customized and add some features. Let's do how, let's see how well you can do that. Thank you very much for following along with me and I will see you in the next lesson.